Field fillers, back markers, lap traffic. The slowest cars in NASCAR have gone by many names and even more definitions. In many ways, they're identical. Slower cars with limited sponsorship, older equipment, few if any full-time crew members, and little to no affiliation with full-time teams. In other ways, they can vary dramatically. The team could be brand new or active for many years. Their drivers anything from completely inexperienced to seasoned veterans. In early 2004, one man offered a definition of his own. You have a favorite driver who seldom if ever wins, and has had more than a share of bad luck. People in your office pool laugh at you for picking him every week, and you're probably frustrated at the lack of media attention he receives. Yet you continue to support him. Perhaps he grew up near you, or you support his charity work, or you feel that he's a good role model for your children. Whatever the reason, he's your man, regardless of where he finishes on Sunday. In October 2003, the man who wrote this shared much in common with his subject matter. He'd been downsized from a major corporation and had spent much of the winter trying to find a new job. A longtime sports fan from Oklahoma by way of New England, he'd always pulled for the underdog in sports, whether it was the Boston Red Sox or the Oklahoma State Cowboys. He'd also been a NASCAR fan since the 1980s and was outspoken in his dislike for the sports direction heading into 2004. Like many others, I'm not very pleased with the changes NASCAR implemented during the past offseason. That doesn't mean I'm against change. I simply don't agree with the magnitude of these changes. Some fans have moved on, and were it not for my support of a handful of drivers, I would have been among them. All of my favorite drivers are within a few years of retirement, and from a personal standpoint, I'm hoping that this site will keep me interested in the sport once they're gone. It's a hard habit to break. I'm also annoyed that most of the media heaps the lion's share of attention on a small group of drivers, and I'm not convinced that the playoffs, it is what it is, Mr. France, are going to do anything to improve that. I hope to put a little weight on the other end of the scale by focusing stories and commentary on the rest of the field, the underdogs. That man's name was Dave Lawrence, and at his wife's suggestion, he decided to start a brand new NASCAR website called RacingUnderdog.com. The site went live on February 9th, 2004, and though Dave didn't know it yet, his life was about to take a most interesting left turn. As if by divine retribution, they returned from the brink of extinction in even greater numbers. They arose anger in some, admiration in others, but each knew 2004 was their chance to rise. They were the Field Fillers!